Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Caitlin Stansel filling in for Kim Ratcliffe today and it's a cloudy start to the afternoon with our live shot here from Wrightsville Beach and not the warmest of days but meteorologist Gannon Medwick joins us now and you say it's looking to be a really good beach day starting tomorrow though. Well, yeah, I think that maybe classic beach weather fills in tomorrow with a little more sunshine and a lot more heat, sort of cut from the same cloth. That New at noon, we've learned the, the Pender County Finance Director is leaving his post. Butch Watson's res resignation goes into effect starting August 1st. And right now, we don't know exactly why he's leaving, but the news comes after several concerns surrounding the audit for the days spanning between 2012 and 2013. Looks like we have the wrong video up there right now, but a draft of that audit was turned in last week, but it should have been turned in last fall. The draft states the finance officer failed to perform his duties, among other mistakes. A man in Wilmington was taken to the hospital after being repeatedly punched and hit with his own bicycle by two suspects. This reportedly happened Wednesday afternoon in the 1000 block of Fox Grove Court. Now that's the right map we have there now. The victim told police he was riding a bike when one suspect grabbed it and forced him off. That's when the victim claims another suspect started punching him and hitting him in the head with that very same bike. This man on your screen, Kevin Scott, is believed to be one of those suspects. The victim in this case says the men who assaulted him took his money, credit cards and shoes before they left. And just hours earlier, an armed robbery was reported on Castle Street. The victim said he was approached by two men around 8 Wednesday morning. They pulled a gun on him and demanded he empty his pockets. The victim refused at first, but the suspects were able to get away with, a, with the victim's cell phone and his wallet. Out of Brunswick County, Denzel Hill remains in jail, facing dozens of sexual assault charges. We've learned officials actually increased his bond once again. It now stands at more than $7 million. You'll remember we told you his bond already increased from $1 to $2 million earlier this week. And Hill, who is from Leland, is charged with more than 50 sex crimes as well as kidnapping and other offenses. Happening right now, police in Whiteville are asking for your help looking for a missing teenager named Nick Belichi. Officials believe he has dementia or some other cognitive impairment. He was last seen near the Wilco Hess on J.K. Powell Road there in Whiteville. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Whiteville Police Department at the number you see on your screen. Looking ahead, family and friends are getting together to remember two-year-old Carter Gibson at his funeral today. A car hit and killed him over the weekend in Pender County. His funeral is from 5 to 7 today at Cobble Ward Smith Funeral Home on Oleander Drive in Wilmington. In a statement to WCT, Carter Gibson's family writes in part, he was a blessing from God and could put a smile on anyone's face that had the pleasure to meet him. He was truly a ray of sunshine and a bundle of joy. While continuing our coverage on the fight for film incentives in our state, the North Carolina Film Office has released new numbers about the impact of film here on North Carolina. They say just six months into the year, productions have created more than $268 million in direct in-state spending and nearly 19,000 job opportunities. As of July 15th, the film office reports that more than 40 productions have filed intent to film forms, indicating that they have or will be filming here in the Tar Heel State. That video you see from Max Steele filming here in the Port City. And the Surf City Police Department warning people not to leave things on the beach overnight. Officials say this has become a problem in the past few weeks. They've gotten numerous complaints about items being left behind. The town policy states any beach equipment like rafts, tents, umbrellas, even chairs left out from sunset to sunrise are considered abandoned property. They will be removed and disposed of by the town if they are left there. The policy has been in effect year round. Happening today, President Barack Obama inviting leaders from Central America to the White House. He wants to talk about the large number of young immigrants flooding into the United States from those countries. He's hoping to show presidential action even as Congress remains deeply split over proposals to stem the crisis on the border. The latest numbers show more than 57,000 minors. A large number there have arrived since October, mostly from Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador. The governor of Virginia will be touring the scene of a deadly tornado there today. The twister ripped through a, ca a campground on Chesapeake Bay on Friday. Two people were killed, dozens more hurt. You can just see the scene there, trees snapped in half and on top of buildings there. Devastating scenes that he'll be looking at today. Well, coming up, the families of those who died on Malaysian Flight 17 are receiving the remains of their loved ones. 
We'll find out why some families want them back before a very important holiday. And let's take a look at your midday stocks. Both the Dow and NASDAQ are down at this hour. News at midday. Some incredible video. Take a look at this. As the crisis between Israel and Gaza continues, we're getting brand new video in of that Iron Dome system being used over Tel Aviv to keep rockets out. You can see right now the Secretary General of the United Nations says the killing must stop. And in this video you see right there it crashes into one of those rockets kind of seeking it out in the air. And as we speak, top officials are meeting to consider international ceasefire proposals. The violence there not just affecting those who live on the ground, but also international flights. The latest reports say an Air Canada flight was told to circle Tel Aviv's airport for 10 minutes while air traffic controllers confirmed that it was safe for them to finally land. And new video and details this afternoon into that deadly Air Algerie crash in Mali. Soldiers from France say they have found one of the black boxes from that flight. Officials believe bad weather caused Thursday's crash that killed at least 116 people. But they're not ruling out terrorism as a cause at this time. You can see in that video just destruction there from that crash. And the families of Flight 17 are counting the days until their loved ones' bodies come home. The timing of their return, especially urgent in Malaysia. Will Ripley reports families are desperate for the remains to arrive in time for one of the nation's most important holidays. The report this afternoon of a child dying after being left in a hot car. These stories just continue to make headlines this summer. This one out of Kansas. The scene there just after 630 Thursday night. You can see cop cars out there in front of that home. A local station reporting that the baby was just 10 months old and a foster child. The two men who were supposed to be taking care of that baby are talking with police at this point. But these stories just continue to make you shake your head and wonder about what is going on there. And thousands of you are getting money back thanks to a provision in Obamacare. And here's how those numbers break down. Health insurance providers are returning over $8 million to families in North Carolina. That's about $77 per family. More than 182,000 families are benefiting from those funds. And some insurers were forced to issue the refunds because they didn't spend 80% of their 2013 premiums on patient care. Well, listen to this heartwarming, heartwarming story. Conjoined brothers who some doubted would be alive today returned to the hospital in Dallas where they were separated to celebrate their first birthday. Janet St. James has their story. 